trying to get this leg used to off-road walking. Now I know I've got to do it easy, easily and not too far to, at once, but my halfway solution is a walking stick. Now this is a fold-up walking stick that I used to have before I was on crutches, before my foot got really bad, before um, I ended up having the amputation. This was the first thing I got was a walking stick to help me walk. So um, it's going to be my last thing and it folds up in, and I can carry it on my back. So yeah, I'm using it to help me along on uneven ground. It's actually way, way, way farther than you think walking on uneven ground when you've only got a foot that looks like that. Um, you've always got to look at what, where your foot is going, whether you're going to stand yourself in a pothole or you know something like that. It's quite tricky, but I'm determined to crack it. So I've walked uh, 0.25 uh, kilometres. The leg's starting to get sweaty. I can feel it sliding up and down inside the liner. Um, I've probably done this twice now. I didn't have the Garmin on the first time. And I'm on the way back. I've sat down on a log for a bit. I'm gonna see if I can get back to the 0.25 without stopping. Today I thought I would address a topic that comes up a bit, um, uh, but I saw someone uh, post something recently on one of the groups that I'm in, and I guess this question is something that is a real issue if you're facing amputation, and that is how do you physically and mentally prepare yourself for that? answer to this to be fair um, and everybody's going to deal with this completely differently so I'm not saying that the way I did it is the way you should do it but I'm going to explain how and why and it might help if you're facing this sort of issue as well. Now it's also it depends on how you arrived at amputation. Mine was elective and I had had multiple sev seven surgeries to try and save my left leg and the problem being a lack of blood flow to my foot um, and all of the surgeries actually failed and I was in and out of hospital frequently over a very short space of time these seven surgeries happened and further back down the track I knew that ultimately the outcome could be amputation but at that point they were like oh don't be silly but the idea was already in my mind at that point, even if I hadn't addressed it emotionally. On the 2nd of October 2020, I were, had been back to the hospital because uh, the full femoral distal bypass that they had done on me had failed. And they had done a scan and they found that the bypass was completely blocked again and there was no blood flow to my foot Uh wrong there was 20 percent of blood flow to my foot and i had uh, i was in hospital at the time and they were coming around to tell me this result and to tell me what the next possible um roads were now in a hospital there is no privacy i was in a ward with four beds and they pulled the curtain round but i knew i had I'd been in there a wee while and I knew all the people in the ward quite well. We'd been, they knew what was happening and they could hear on the other side of the curtain, they could hear what had been said. And of course, when the curtain came back, they were all like... Anyway, um, they came in and told me that the uh, bypass had failed, that it was blocked uh, at its full length. There was no more... Um, restorative surgeries they could do on it because there was too much damage to my lower leg and they had felt like they had done everything that was physically possible surgery wise there was no more options left I could keep the foot with the very limited um, function that it had and the significant pain or I could have an amputation now for me I didn't even think twice there was no choice to be made you, um, you you have to think about the future quality of life. And for me, the leg was doing nothing for me. Um, it might seem like a clinical response, 
but it's true. I couldn't use it. I couldn't walk. I'd been on crutches for well over a year to 18 months. I wasn't able to work. I couldn't ride my bike and I had had to stop swimming. And I was on so many drugs that they weren't even working. So it was not an, a decision that needed to be thought about. Um, so I immediately said, well, it's not doing any and it's not doing anything for me. So we'll chop it off. And from there, once you have emotionally dealt with the fact that there is actually an amputation that is going to happen, then there's a whole lot of other things that happen over many months and years in, into the future after that date. Now, for me, here is what I did first. So we were talking about the amputation and when did I want it to happen? Well, hell, you're not going to have me hanging on for weeks, waiting for someone to chop my leg off. Can you imagine what that would be like? I asked her when the next very, very next date was for surgery, and it was five days later. So we that's the date we went for. Five days after I found I would lose the leg, if I if I was opting to lose the leg, five days, and they cut it off. Because you know, I'm not hanging around here. This is shit. So we need to have it over with, with it, so that I don't wind myself into crazy. So that's the, also the day that I started these video blogs. I went online and looked up some things because I hadn't even been a member of any MPT groups and didn't even know how the heck this worked. And I thought about the day um, from morning to evening and what it would be like with only one foot. So I had to think about that. And, and from a lighthearted point of view, am I able to get dressed while standing on one leg? I don't know. So I tried it. Am I able to use the crutches without the foot on, other foot on the floor at all? Because I'd always been partial weight bearing. So I tried it. it. You need to work on your shoulders, man, because shoulders become your feet for a while. So you need strong arms. So I was walking around without the foot on the floor to get my arms used to it. I was still in the pool and I was swimming without legs. And I'd been doing that for a long time to get my arms used to it. I, um, thought about oh, what else did I think about teeth brushing your teeth standing on one leg so I've worked out how I might do that I'll give you a little tip the foot that can't go to the ground put your knee against the surface so I stand on one leg at the sink looking into the mirror and my knee is against the front of the sink that is enough to keep me balanced um, just if I've got a reference point with the other leg that's what I often do is have my knee against something else anyway um so I made a few little videos and then I pondered about how about getting in and out of cars, getting up and down off surfaces, working, I worked up my arms and my remaining leg so that this remaining leg could get me out of a seat without me looking like a geriatric. Um, and I'd worked through all of those. I also w uh, got on the floor and figured out how I might get up with only one leg. That takes practice. Do not try that too soon. Um, and that's what I did in the days before. I also had to say farewell to the foot. And I thought about how I might do this and I made an ode to the leg. No, an ode to the foot. I have posted it before, but here it is again. Ode to the foot. You have carried me far and wide, taken for granted in my stride. Now my stride's about to change but look at the mobility I will gain. Sad to lose a part of me, I'll cast those ashes out to sea. Just you wait, I'll get bionic, making my cycling ultrasonic. See you on the other side. I'm sure it'll be an horrific ride. Never take anything at all for granted. Appreciate what you've been handed. So what I did was I thought about all the things my feet do on a daily basis and I videoed them all. It seemed really stupid at the time, but I'm really glad I did it. And uh, and I wrote the poetry over the top myself, and that's how I farewelled the foot. We had a bye-bye to the foot party, uh, me and a few friends, and um, yes. So by the time I got to the day of the amputation surgery, my, in my mind, I was, I was okay, I was ready, I can do this. The next thing I had to deal with... Um, on the the very last thing before um, the actual surgery happened was I needed to know what life would be like on the other side. So I listed all the things that I wanted to be able to get back to and how uh, puzzled how we might do those in small stages. So I knew the first one would be swimming because you don't need feet for swimming. And I wanted to be able to walk 
without crutches. I've only achieved that in this last week. Um, and each time I managed to do something that I could do when I, I couldn't do when I had two feet, I celebrated. And it did not matter whether I had the prosthetic foot or whether it was on one leg and crutches. If I achieved something on my one foot and crutches that I couldn't achieve with two foot and two feet and crutches, I celebrated. Make sure you celebrate every small little triumph on the way because there is many, many hurdles to be had and you need to keep a, a perspective on this because yes, it's shit. And no, no one really can understand how you feel, but you know how you feel. Don't let yourself get stuck in the sorrow. You need to have a goal. How is your life gonna be afterwards? What do you want to be able to get back first, second, third. So I was working on how to how to drive. I've lost my left leg, so it didn't make much difference to me because I have an automatic car. But if you ha are losing a right leg, um, driving, look into how to adapt cars. Now I know that you can get flip down pedals that will adapt a car to make you able to drive with a left side accelerator and then lift them up and then a normal person with two feet can drive, still drive the same car. I know that is possible. That sounds like the easiest adaptation for a car rather than having to change to hands controls and all that sort of thing. Well, of course you'd have to if you were a double amputee. So, like I said, firstly, tackle the emotional. Get your head around the fact this thing is happening and when it's happening. Then sort out the mechanics. How is your life going to operate afterwards? So get rid of rugs, make floors clear, make sure the doors are wide enough and will open up against the wall. Make sure the furniture is not squished against other furniture or against the wall. Make sure you can get all the way around the bed. Make sure you can, you've got a toilet riser, a seat for the shower, rails if you have them. Make sure your arms are strong. You're going to need strong arms and strengthen the right leg. If you've got a little bit of time between when you've decided and when you have the surgery, they're the two things I would say you do. Strengthen your arms, strengthen your leg, the one that you've still got left. So I hope that has helped. I always welcome questions. So if there's anything you want to know about any of this, then please do ask me. Yes, there'll be shit days. Yes, there'll be days when you don't feel like getting up at all, days where you cannot see how this is ever going to be better. And that is okay. Im imagine it like the grief process. You've lost a limb. Imagine it like the grief process of losing a person. It is the same. You've got all the same anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt. All those things will go through your mind and they might not necessarily go in the logical grief process order if you look it up on the internet. It will come at you like a smack in the head sometimes and other times you'll be able to see it sneaking up and be able to deal with it. All of this is okay but make sure you've got a, a goal and make sure you know what it is you're trying to get back to afterwards and stay focused on that. Good luck.